Having a good one so far? First session of the day? <laughs> cool. Um, so I'm, I'm Ross Scammell. I'm the product manager for 2D. Can you hear me if I walk away? Can you still hear me? I'm the product manager for 2D at Unity. Um, and um, this is my ki favorite kind of session to give, which is kind of a spread of um, what, what, we're, what we've been doing, a review of some of the stuff that's been released, some of the stuff that's very, very close to being released, next version, um, and then where we're kind of going, a little bit of in-development, um, and then we'll take it from there. So I want to get a feel for the room. Um, who in this room is a game developer? Makes games, and just games. Oh, some hands went down. <laughs> okay, um, who are the artists? And the designers? Okay, and the coders? Gonna get a lot of them. There we go. Okay, awesome. Um, so how many of you are making a 2D game right now? Oh, very cool. Okay, and those of you who are not, you're interested in making a 2D game in the near future? Okay, cool, nice. Thank you. Um, so the idea really is to go over uh, what we've got, uh, what we're working on, um, and where we're headed. So as always in 2D, we're going to start with a foundation, and then we're going to build up on, on all the other layers. Um, so core. So first of all, um, some of the important things that you might have missed, um, we've added... Um, it's a crucial addition, really, to Sprite Atlases, which is um, APIs. So if you're using Sprite Atlases and you want control over how those Sprite Atlases get generated, when they get generated, uh, we added uh, APIs to control that. Um, so create, kind of edit, when you want to build them, that kind of thing. So for the Sprite renderer, and I think we saw this in the keynote earlier, um, we've added the ability to sort by pivot. This was at least a version ago. Um, and the typical use case is when you've got characters or multiple sprites with pivots in interesting places and you want to be able to sort them by their pivot points. Um, but for today's session, even though core is important, uh, we're going to focus on world building, animation, and some graphics features. So let's start with world building. OK, so we're going to look at two fairly large features uh, that came out, um, sorry, that are in 2018. Um, one of them actually was previous, previous version. You seen that OK? Um, and that's, of course, uh, enhancements to tile map and sprite shape. So we've got um, hexagonal tile maps, very, very, very dark uh, hexagonal um, grid there, OK? Um, and this is, these are grids that are basically characterized by a consistent or a constant distance between the center and any point on the edge. Typically used in strategic tabletop games um, because that kind of shape makes it ideal for kind of laying out tactical play area, right? So this was, uh, this was an ask we got some time ago and I'm, I'm happy that it's uh, finally out. Um, so these are available in two varieties. You've got your point top hexagons and your um, flat top hexagons. So this is an example um, of art from the asset store by uh, David Baumgart, um, his hexagonal tile maps. As you can see, we've got some nice sorting going on there where the mountains from behind um, are being overlaid by the mountains in the front. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, next up for tile maps, isometric. So this, of course, is probably the most popular um, grid system that you see used in uh, all sorts of RPG, strategy games, everything, really. Uh, city builders, that kind of stuff. So again, the idea here is um, we, they're characterized by being kind of the same size on all axes. Uh, but you can scale these as well in Unity. So if you're using kind of you know, diametric projections or stuff like that, um, you can get away with more interesting uh, isometric tiles. Um, so here's, again, the, uh, the dungeon set, the dungeon isometric tile set from Kenny, of course. Uh, so thank you very much, Kenny. Um, so again, you can add colliders, you can change grid settings to all of these as you would expect. Um, you can write all the same scriptable brushes, and uh, scriptable tiles that you could do with rectangular tiles, except now they work for hexagon and ISO. 
Cool. Okay, next up, sprite shape. So we're gonna do a little demo on this. So um, I'll switch out from slides and um, we'll be in Unity for a bit. So the idea behind sprite shape is this, uh, this, this concept of defining a shape and then tiling sprites along the edge um, and then tiling sprites in the fill as well. Right, so it's a Bezier spline path with kind of this sprite switching uh, that will that will set up using uh, angle ranges. So let's let's jump into Unity. I'd much rather spend some time there showing you how it works. Um, let's do a sprite shape demo where we'll look at these ideas, these concepts of the sprite shape profile, angle ranges, sprite shape controller. How do you deal with corners in this kind of world of organic shapes? and um, other techniques that you can use when you're working with multiple sprite shapes. Okay. Let's hope all this stuff works. Just to get a show of hands from the room, how many of you have tried out the sprite shape package? Has anyone done this? Okay, some people, cool. How many of you know about the package manager? Another show of hands? Okay, cool. So all of the stuff I'm showing you today is available via the package manager. So you wanna turn on preview packages so that you can see all of the 2D preview packages to try them out. And they're all there, 2D animation, 2D IK, um, sprite shape, and uh, what's the other one? Pixel perfect camera. Okay, so let's take a look at a typical sprite shape. So can everyone see that? It's an empty Unity scene. Um, and I want to bring in, I want to bring in a sprite shape. So the first thing to do is you want to set up what's called a sprite shape profile. And this is the UI for that here in the, in the inspector. Um, if we can look at this space down here, this is where a lot of the interesting stuff happens. We're setting up angle ranges based on different sprites. So the sprite is defined down here, right where it says grass outline. There we go. And then you define a bunch of angle ranges. So the one that's selected here is linked to that sprite. And any time that we see a normal from that spline facing in this direction, we will put that sprite at that spot on the segment. There's another sprite down here. Okay, so let's drag this into the scene. Let's see what happens. Oh, there we go. Cool. So if I zoom in on that, Let's play around with it. Let's edit it a little bit. Uh, come in here. Let's change that to smooth. Change that one to smooth. And you can see wherever we've got uh, that range, it will show that particular sprite. Okay, cool. And then the fill is defined again in the, over here, in the fill texture. We've got a dark gray fill, and you set up a pixel per unit to control tiling. So in the upcoming update to this, we're gonna add stretch fill UVs. So if you wanna have like a, a sprite that just spreads across the entire contents of that, of that fill, uh, that'll work fine. Um, and then the other thing we're gonna be adding is more control points. So right now, if we look at the control point set, you've got kind of broken uh, linear, sorry, there we go, broken or linear um, control points. What we wanna add is a, uh, continuous non-mirrored, which is probably the most common kind of tangent uh, that you're going to be using. Cool. Okay, so let's, uh, let's look at a corner case, literally. Um, corner cases. So let's say you're building something like this, right? Um, looks like you might use a tile map, right? But what if you want it to be somewhat, you know, a little bit more interesting, not so organic, but also not so, uh, not so straight. Uh, you want to move the lines around. You don't want them to be necessarily um, parallel. So what can you do? You can use sprite shape to define corners so that you get something a little bit more funky. Right, so let's take a look at this uh, profile. How did we do this? So if we zoom in here, we can see that what we've got is the same kind of angle ranges that we set up earlier. So corner, sorry, top, side, bottom, bottom. And then down here we've defined a bunch of corner sprites. So these are for your typical inner, outer, top, left, top, right, and the whole spread, right? So eight different corner pieces. 
And then based on the angles that you've got here, we do the appropriate amount of skew. Cool. Okay, the final case I want to show you is a platformer because it's interesting. A couple of things come up when you try to build a platformer. So here we've got a piece with a kind of a grassy top and it's all looking really nice, except it doesn't match with, um, you know, these edges kind of look hard. It's not exactly what I wanted. So let's go to our sprite shape profile. Let's find the right one that we're using here, grass and rocks. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're using sprite borders. So again, let's look at the grass top. We've defined sprite borders here. If we look at the sprite itself, it's actually got uh, slices here and here. Um, I don't actually have that open. Okay, let's look at the sprite editor. There we go. We can see the, the, slide has, the sprite has been sliced uh, so that there are kind of three segments to it. Um, and we're going to use those. Okay, so let's turn that on. Use sprite borders. There we go. That's much better. Um, and I want the grass to always kind of draw on top of these rocks. So the other thing we can do, if we look at our angle ranges, is for this particular angle range, I can set an order. So right now they are the same. They're both order zero. If I just set it to grass order one, I can draw grass over rocks all the time. So it's a, it's a bunch of rules, right, that you're setting up to be able to draw these sprites in an organic way over a shape. Okay, so a few more interesting cases. Let's, uh, let's unhide the rest of this. Um, okay, so here we've got um, two platform pieces. So you might wanna make a bunch of reusable pieces. Uh, how do you get them to work together? Uh, a couple of features I wanna highlight. Let's go into uh, the spline itself and realize that we can do some snapping so we can actually get the splines to match up um, a little bit more neatly. So let's go in here, let's match up the spline correctly. Uh, turn on snapping, okay, and there we go. That's a little bit better. Okay, and then you'll notice that the fill doesn't necessarily match now. There's no tiling across that. So what I want to do is I want to go to the grass and rocks again, and I want to make sure that we're using world space UVs. So now we've got world space UVs, and you can't quite tell that that's made up of two different shapes. So there's nice kind of uh, merger of two pieces. And the last, uh, the last bit here is I want to show how we can change um, kind of variance. So for each, for each range, you'll notice you can define more than one sprite. Here we've got grass top. Let's change it to grass top with small rocks. Um, okay, let's choose this one. Okay. And then what we want to do here is we just want to change the, um, sorry. All I want to do is select that point and then I want to change the sprite index that I'm referring to. So here we can see, right, we make it a little bit more interesting. Now we have some rocks. Cool. There you go. Um, of course, you can be doing all of this without the fill, so you get more interesting shapes like this, right? You can change the height of each, uh, of each section to make it kind of do this weird uh, Lorax world kind of Tim Burton-esque thing. Or you can just turn off the edge and use the fill. So then we get this kind of uh, strangeness, right? Where these are all shapes, but they don't have... Um, they don't have uh, edges, right? So it's just a fill texture, in this case, a really small one. So we're kind of getting into that world of vector art here. And then you get a scene like that, which is made up of a couple of sprites um, and a whole bunch of sprite shapes. Cool. Okay, so back to slides. So let's, let's talk a bit about animation and where we are there. So animation has been released as a preview package for phase one. The idea there was to kind of work on um, the essential uh, rigging of a single sprite, right? Making sure that that works correctly. Um, so what we've done for phase two, and this will be released very soon. We're, uh, we're a couple of weeks away, I'd guess, uh, at this point. 
Um, this is built on top of those features and workflows that we developed in phase one and very much informed by the feedback of those of you who used it um, and jumped into the forums and told us what you thought, what we did right, what we did wrong, what could be better. Um, and we added on um, the support for multi-sprite characters. So this is when you have a, like a multi-layered uh, Photoshop file, you drag that into Unity and now you can just rig a whole bunch of sprites together, kind of associate all of them with a single skeleton. Um, it's interesting. We should, we should take a look at that in Unity. So let's do a demo of that um, shortly. Uh, but basically the idea here was to work on workflows for larger productions, uh, kind of where, where people would be working uh, with kind of these multi-layered Photoshop uh, files and uh, make sure that we support that. Um, very crucial, uh, right in the center of everything that we do with sprite rigging is this kind of idea of you're editing bones, you're tessellating the mesh, you're painting weights, and you're previewing. And we wanted to make sure that we got this uh, iteration loop a lot tighter. So uh, you'll see some of the changes uh, that we've made. Uh, how many of you used the previous 2D animation package? Anyone in the room? Cool, okay, thank you. Your feedback was priceless. Very, very useful. Um, so the, the sprite editor window um, used to come in a, in a bunch of parts. We had a, a bone editor, we had a geometry and skinning editor. That's become just one thing, skinning editor, right? Um, and we'll see this in Unity in a minute. We've added a whole bunch of buttons down the side, so you kind of have a uh, skinning uh, toolbar. And um, the sprite skin component um, is the, the thing that gets attached to all of this in the scene to kind of build that relationship between the bones and the sprite mesh. Okay, so the demo we're gonna take a look at today, basically a uh, kind of a project, a short project review of um, a sprite rigging demo of multiple sprites, right? Of something that's been brought in as multiple sprites. Okay, let's take a look. in Unity. Okay, so this is a character composed of multiple parts. So I'm gonna start by showing you the importer. Um, here we are, let's zoom in. A couple of typos here and there, please forgive those. <laughs> it's not yet out. Um, and this is, I think uh, we're talking about maybe three or four weeks ago. Uh, this particular version. So you can see we've brought in uh, this character Faye um, and she has been brought in um, as a bunch of layers, right, from a PSB file. Um, and as you can see, I wanna, I wanna draw your attention to this stuff here. So you can set it up to import hidden layers or not. So if you're working in Photoshop and you've hidden some layers because maybe you were constructing some stuff or playing around, trying out some ideas, you don't want those, but you also don't want to remove them from your PSD file. You want to keep your construction there. Uh, that's fine. Just turn that off and we don't get the hidden layers. Uh, we're going to do a, a mosaic as you bring in that, um, that uh, file. And I'll show you how that looks in a minute. It's pretty cool. Um, we can set up the character rig for that. Um, and then we can do a bunch of other things, uh, which I won't cover today, uh, but when it's released, it'll come with a little manual so that everyone can understand what we're doing there. So let's, uh, let's jump into the sprite uh, editor. So the first thing you'll notice is we've added just one skinning editor. There it is. So you've got your sprite editor, you've got a custom outline, custom physics shape, and skinning, right? Just one, all in one. And you'll notice there's a whole bunch of buttons down the side here, basically grouped into bone editing, uh, this is geometry editing, and then this is all about weight painting. Um, and then what I want to show you is that what this Photoshop file really looks like is, well, it looks like this, but how we're really thinking about it in Unity is like this, right? So it's a sprite sheet uh, generated from Photoshop layers uh, that you've rigged, and then we show you the rig in overlay. So there's a whole bunch of things going on. So let's look at what these controls are. So you can jump over here and uh, you can preview your pose, of course, it's really important. Whee, there we go. 
It's got a really bendy hat. Um, you can jump in here and you can um, add bones or you can move them around. Uh, in this case, if you move a bone, of course, it gets disconnected. If you move a joint, it stays like that. Um, you can add more bones. So just selecting here, we can just click out some bones. Really easy. Okay. Um, and then if we look at um, this one, we can see that basically what we're doing here is uh, splitting bones. So once you've um, designed your character, you might realize, hey, I need a little bit more articulation here. So I can just jump in here and, and add a joint, right? And then what else can we do? Um, bone reparenting. So sometimes the way you've built your framework is not, is not right. It's not, not, not exact. The skeleton needs some reparenting. Um, so you can do all of that here. That opens up a little window here, which is like a little minor, a uh, little uh, tiny inspector, right? Allows you to look at the hierarchy of bones and turn them on and off, uh, change their bone depth. That's really important because the bone depth will control the draw order of the sprite that it's influencing, of the geometry that it's influencing. Um, and you can rename all of these bones. So this is really a full-fledged inspector, right, in that sense. Cool. Um, next up, uh, you can just jump in here to edit geometry. So if I click on a sprite, I can select each of these sprites separately like this, and then jump in and edit the geometry, right? Add, uh, move points around, uh, add vertices. So in this case, I can add a vertex there and kind of control the tessellation manually like that. Or maybe I want to come in here and I want to uh, do like edges, right? I want to bring an edge in here. Um, or maybe I want to come over here and split the edges. So this is very useful if, again, the lines are not exactly where you expect them to be. Um, and then finally, um, this is automatic generation. So if you have no sprites selected, uh, this will generate the geometry for all of those sprites automatically based on things like outline detail, alpha tolerance, and that subdivision um, component so that you get that right kind of articulation for deforming. Cool. Um, so you can paint weights. You can, you can set weights, I should say, um, both uh, by selecting the individual vertices, vertices like this, right? And then you can set up by slider how much you want. You can add and subtract. You can smooth. So if you've already got weights and you want to smooth the weights, you can do that. Uh, you can also do that via painting. So there's a very nice interface for that. Just select the bone, and then off you go. You can start painting and influence. Right? So in this case, we're doing grow and shrink. If I want to do add and subtract, that will actually overwrite all the other stuff in there. Or maybe I want to smooth the result of what I've got. So smoothing it a little bit there. Cool. Um, and then finally here, um, this is bone influences. So this is kind of, uh, this is useful when you're working with multi-layered sprites because you've got a skeleton, a complex skeleton overlaid over a complex set of sprites. So you want to know which bones are affecting which sprites, which can be a little bit difficult to, to see. So by using bone influence, the bone influence window, you can kind of add and remove uh, the bones that you want or you don't want to influence that particular sprite. So here we see a list of all the bones that are influencing um, the head and the hat that we've got here. And we can add and remove those here. Or you can just select a bone and then add it to, to this list. Um, and then finally, if you've, if you've got all your stuff set up and you want to generate some weights, so here's an example. Um, let's clear that. So you've set this up. It's being influenced by these bones. And you want to just do a generate and it will generate the right kind of um, blend between those bones automatically. And then you can check if it's good enough by previewing deformation, right? And you're good to go. Cool. So let's revert all those changes. Let's go to the scene view. Let me get rid of this example here. And I can, if you look at what happened when we imported that file, it actually got turned into a whole bunch of uh, prefabs. Prefabs within prefabs. So that's very cool. Um, and if we drag these into the scene, 
we get uh, automatically uh, the skeleton gets generated. Um, and for each of these parts, we have a sprite skin component that tells you how which bones are currently running on that part. And um, you can do you can start doing your animation. Right, and you're off. So if we look at the character that I had earlier. Oh, no, I've destroyed it. Right, so you can set up um, some pretty cool animation using uh, same kind of techniques that you had for single sprite. So for example, that, that head is a single sprite. Um, and I'm using bone depth to kind of get parts of the sprite to render behind other parts of the same sprite. Um, but then I'm also using multiple sprite techniques to kind of get the amulet to sway and all that kind of stuff. Cool. So that's uh, animation with multiple sprites. Okay, back to the slides. So next up, graphics. Um, so this is, is it's uh, it's an interesting time for the for the two D team at Unity because we are we've we've done a lot of work on world building. We're kind of in the middle of the road, kind of getting to the end of it for animation, um, and we're ramping up on graphics. And one of the first things we did was Pixel Perfect. Um, this was probably number one on our feedback site for a very long time. Um, and it was nice to finally get to it and kind of provide a solution for those of you who are making um, pixel art games or, like, like I said, uh, retro games. Um, and there are very specific things that, that you want to do. So basically, it comes down to this idea of differences in resolution and motion called these imperfections, right? This kind of filtering and stuff that's going on um, when you're doing your pixel art rendering. And it just looks wrong, right? It doesn't capture the, the, the look that you're going for. So the solution basically was that everyone was writing their own scripts to remap stuff, right? Um, so we're hoping that we've got a better solution for you in the form of our pixel perfect camera. Um, it's basically a component uh, that ensures your pixel art just you know, looks good, remains crisp and clear, um, takes care of calculations needed for this stuff, um, and the setup's fairly light, and you can even run it in edit mode so you can see if you've got it, if you've got it working for, your, uh, for the resolution that you're aiming at, right, that you're targeting. Um, we have added a bunch of best practices to this because there are a few concepts that might um, throw you off if it's your first time using it. So setting all the sprites to the same pixel per unit value is a good idea. Uh, if you know what you're doing, you can play around with that. That's not necessarily the case, but it's definitely a good first step. Um, you want to set your filter mode for these sprites to point and compression to none. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get unexpected filtering. Um, and then we get to the pivots, right? The, um, the uh, pivot for each sprite element. You want to set it to custom. And then we added this just to support pixel perfect, which is a pixel unit mode that you can set in the sprite editor, which is pixels, right? So then your pixel, your pivot is set exactly um, to one of the boundaries in the pixels. Um, the other thing you want to do, especially for things that are going to move, right, um, or are going to have relative motion uh, when compared with a camera, is you want to have um, everything kind of sitting on that pixel grid, if, if you can imagine that in quotes. Um, so the way to do this is quite simply, again, we're back at PPU. If you understand uh, your pixels per unit for your project, uh, you want to get into your snap settings and figure out what is one divided by your PPU. And that basically defines your pixel grid. And then you can snap all axes to everything that's selected. And everything will land very nicely on uh, a good starting point on the pixel grid. And from that point onwards, the Pixel Perfect camera can take it and do the changes it needs to do. Something to, uh, to keep in mind, when we're using the Pixel Perfect camera, we're not changing uh, the transform of the object uh, in the game to make the correction. Uh, it happens just before we submit to the graphics card. So you're, you are free to do all sorts of cool stuff, like have physics controlled characters and things like that. Um, it happens just before we render. So, 
And then, um, 2D lights and shadows. So this is uh, quite exciting. Uh, we're going to add a bunch of lights uh, that are mobile friendly. Um, we call these shape-based lights. So think about kind of what we were doing with sprite shape earlier, um, but by defining a uh, kind of a shape uh, that would contain a light, right? And you can then use that to accent parts of your level. Um, that's, that's the basic idea. Uh, you can add many of those to a scene and that will run very well on mobile. Um, the next set of uh, lights are slightly more performance uh, intensive, 2D point lights and spotlights. Um, the idea here is that they, there's a sense of direction in them. So you can, you can work with things like normal maps and specular maps and, and you can get kind of specular lighting and rim lighting set up based on masks that work with these 2D point and spotlights. Um, I don't have a demo of the second one yet. I don't have a demo of shadows yet, um, but we can, I will show you, I think we saw this in the keynote earlier, this idea of shape-based lights. And we'll take a look at a video um, that shows these in action. If this will play. There we go, okay. So we've got an unlit 2D scene here. Again, thanks, Kenny, for the assets. Um, and then that's an example of what happens when you get uh, kind of shape-based lights. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it a couple of times so we can, we can kind of dissect what's going on there. Um, so here we can see... Um, oh, no. Gosh darn it. Okay. Um, so here we can see just flat, right? And then what we've got around the alien creatures are circular shape lights with a nice feathering. And then in the back, if you can see those kind of search lights going around, those are shape lights that are based on kind of a triangle-like shape, and then we're just rotating them around, right? Uh, the other thing you may have noticed, we'll do it one more time, is that not all lights are blending additively on top of everything, right? So the background isn't necessarily picking up the aliens, it's only the platforms, right? That kind of thing. So there's layer-based kind of culling as well. So lights can, can affect certain layers or, and just not be included in, uh, in other layers. Cool. And that brings us to the end of, uh, of the new features that we've got going now. Um, there are a couple more things um, that I will be sharing with those of you who are joining me in the round table. Uh, but then we'll be announcing those more publicly um, later on. But for now, what can you do? And this is, uh, this is really important to us because by using this kind of model, we were able to make the changes that we made and uh, kind of address the, the issues that we wanted to address. Um, because really, we, we don't make games, right, at Unity. And we, we need to, we want to support your workflows. We want to know what you're doing. What are your projects about? So uh, try out the preview features. So boot up Package Manager, get the latest 2D packages. Again, you need to turn on preview packages to see them. Um, but please try them out. Uh, tell us what works, of course, right? Um, the, the problem there, the reason I say that is very often if things are working well, uh, it's, it's crickets, which is good. <laughs> but it also means that we don't know if we've done it right or not. Um, Usually, it's the, the, the feedback we'll get is what doesn't work, and that's awesome too. So please keep bringing that feedback. Um, and what have we missed? So usually, we'll miss something, right? Um, we can't cover all the bases, but uh, we want to know if you've got a critical process in your workflows, in your production. Uh, we want to make sure that we're supporting as many of those as possible. Uh, so visit the forums. Uh, your projects. Really, they guide us, right? We're not building things that people have not asked for. Um, and tell us what you're building. We want to know um, so that we can make sure that uh, we support that. How are you building it? So what, what have you tried? And um, you know, in what ways have the features we've given you worked or not? And of course, keep making amazing 2D games in Unity. Thank you very much, everyone.